I don't think people realize how much their skills compound over a three-year period. If you're looking on it on a six-month, even one-year time horizon, you will definitely see results with what you're working on, but nowhere near what you'll see after three years or that's pretty much where I am. I, I wonder it will be after five or 10 years because it, it's, I have never really had a skill or succession been linear growth. Pretty much everything I've had goes pretty slowly at the start and then just has this tail behind it that just can go infinitely larger. That's all I've seen. It's just the small daily habits that compound so much over time. It's, it's really incredible. And if you saw my video yesterday where I was saying I've really, I'm, I'm living the lifestyle most millionaires want or they most millionaires live. I get to do pretty much everything that they are doing. And th the reason why I, I'm saying the compound interest, because three years ago, I, it was around this time when I took my first ever flight, my first time on a plane to meet George Gammon, the guy I got his logo tattooed on my leg. So I asked if I could work for him for free. And I should said I'd pay to work for him, but uh, he said he'd pay me. And I eventually got the job after harassing him and getting his logo stamped on my leg for life and taking my first ever flight to meet him after I already reached out to a hundred other people uh, trying to work for them for free. I, I was listening to a podcast the other day and someone said, you really can find out how much someone wants something by what they do when they get rejected. And I, that resonated with me quite a bit because all I really saw was rejection for probably an eight month time horizon. I was reaching out to dozens and I mean dozens of people a week asking if I could work for them for free. And then I said, scratch that. I'll, I'll pay you to work for you. And I said, I, I will give you 10% of what I earn for the next 10 years if you let me work for you. <laughs> and I, I was going so far out of the line trying to apprentice myself under someone. And my energy levels are low right now. I've, I've probably walked and ran a mixture of maybe seven, eight miles today, and I got a very long workout. So I am exhausted. So I'm trying to give some sort of energy in this video, but I didn't want to do it. But that's the compounding effect. And I know just these small habits, they really lead to something large over a multi-year period of just sticking to something. So Getting back to the point, I, I knew I had to get crazier. I really, really like George. And so I knew that I was going to work for him. And what's funny is he was the number one person I wanted to work for. Number two was funny enough, Doug Casey. And I've, I've been fortunate enough to work for both of them now. And uh, again, besides the point. So I, I got the dude's logo stat, stat just tattooed on my leg. I was 18 in high school, took my first ever flight to Arizona, where I'm actually living now, went from Boston to Arizona. I met the guy uh, and I still didn't get a job for maybe four months after that of continuous harassment. So it's just, it's really not that easy getting started. It's, and when I say linear, the non-linear growth and it's more of a bell curve, it's more just boom, just boom, crash, boom, crash, boom, crash. Then you see a little bit of success, then you just boom, crash again. <laughs> At least that's how, it, how it's been for me. Uh, but it really starts to pick up what surprising enough is you just got to stick with it. I, I can't imagine how much better I will be at what I'm doing and how much more I can get done in the next three years. Because if you told me three years ago, think of what, what position do you want to be in? If I dream to the highest possible degree, I would not picture where I am today. Life can be so much better than your expectations can really meet. And I'm not even going to say that I worked that hard. I would say I more so just took a lot of risk. Uh, I would say quasi-calculated risk, but it could also have gone the other way. But I would have, I guarantee you, I would have just tried again. Uh, I would have just continued to try crazier and crazier things until I got the goal that I was really looking for to apprentice myself under. But I can, looking back at the last three years, I can genuinely say I was not giving it my all. I, I was taking a lot of risks, which are led to the path that I've been in today because a lot of people respected that. But now that I really am working hard, 
I don't think I've been given it my all the past three years. I would say maybe 75% if I'm being honest. I, I was working, but not all out. <laughs> and I still got to a better position in life than I could have ever imagined. And I think the reason for that is a lot of people are not willing to take pretty large risks. And other people who are in a better situation, they see people taking those kinds of risks and they are much more willing to help them. I, I think that's a lot of the reason. And if you are young, and I, there's if you're older, you don't get the same leeway as you do as when you were young. I, I think if someone else did this who was 40 years old, got his logo tattooed on his leg and met him, then it would be a lot creepier. It's, it's just the reality of the situation. But when you are young, you can do these crazy things and they can really work out for you because it shows uh, ambition and drive. Whereas once you get to 30, 40 years old, it is no longer looked at as ambitious, which is why I think it's so crucial doing this during what most people take their college years to just party and do whatever the hell you do in college. And I, I, I don't even know. I, think I, I don't think you learn anything. I mean, ideally, I, I think people should be doing this when they're 16, 17 years old. I, I, that is what I've found benefit in, is just swinging for the fences and trying to get it done. Because then the compounding really, really begins. When you are a young person in the position that I am in right now, I'm surrounded by every single person that I'm surrounded by that I see on a frequent basis. Is They're literally, they have hundreds of millions of dollars a year coming in from their businesses. And they are some of the most successful people on the face of the planet. And so because I'm young and I can provide all of them a skill that I've really developed and crafted, every single one of them wants to talk to me. And then I just barter my skills now. That's, that's Instead of taking money, I usually just say, hey, I'll do this for you. You teach me this. And then that <laughs> takes the compounding to the next level because I understand that I don't need money right now. I have no expenses. I'm having my apartment paid for. I'm having my car, everything paid for. I could easily make $100,000 for the next few months. I, I mean, I, I am 100% confident if everyone who wanted to work with me, I could just say, hey, hey, I'll open up the floodgates, I'll service all you guys, but I don't think that would work. I'm trying to be much more methodical about the situation and, and look at someone like, like Tesla. What did Tesla do? They started with a luxury, expensive car that everyone wanted, but no one could afford and a few people got, but there was always shortage of supply, so they always sold out. And then they had a slightly less expensive car that more people wanted, but then there was a shortage and then they, they, uh, everyone still wanted it. And then they had the cyber truck and the, uh, everything else. They start with the luxury brand and having this scarcity around this very hot commodity. And then they just hopefully in the future, open up the floodgates while still remaining that, that same kind of scarcity. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish with my business. And if I tried to service every single person who want to work with me, a lot of it would fail. A lot of it would because I don't have the back end infrastructure to fulfill all of these clients. So until I have that, I'm not going to take on those clients where I see a lot of people just seeing the quick buck and then they are just saying, okay, I'll take them because it's short term money. But that is at the expense of long, the long term which is why my client retention rate is nearly infinite. Anyone that I work for, for what I'm, what I'm, when I've recently changed what I've been doing, it's been a hundred percent. That's the kind of business that you want where the product is so good. It markets itself because the people that you are helping, they are telling everyone else in, in their space that, Hey, I'm getting these fucking amazing results from this kid. Then they all reach out. That, that is literally what's been happening on a daily, weekly basis. I'm getting a ton of people reaching out saying, hey, Kenny told me that this is what you've been doing for him. What do I need to pay you for a phone call? And I'll just say, nothing, dude. Just I'll help you out right now. Uh, let's, just, let's just get you off the ground because they're not even my ideal clientele right now anyway. So there is a huge opportunity in the space that I'm in, it, but it takes a lot of scalability. 
And until I have that ready, I am going to take a much more methodical and slow approach. Maybe I should have just bigger cojones and try and service everybody. I definitely could service more people than I am right now. If I'm being honest with myself, if I hired a few more people, a few key people, then I very possibly could. So Josh, what's stopping you? I don't know. <laughs> I guess that answers my question. That That's probably what I should be doing. Well, shit. <laughs> uh, I should at least be trying to take on maybe a client every two months. And until results start to slow down per client, then I should just continuously increase. That's probably what I should do. So then it's just hiring the right people. I guess the, the problem right now is I'm not... Uh, I'm just being a pussy. <laughs> um, hmm. That's interesting. See, that's what you do when you talk to yourself every single day. You, you have a predisposed notion in your head, but when you're talking it out, you realize you're an idiot. I, I guess I, I could scale better. That's definitely my biggest mistake right now is my, not inability, but I guess it is. Uh, my skills are not great enough to scale. I guess that's what I need to do. I guess that's what I need to do. Oh, shit. But I, I, I guess this is a conversation that I need to have with myself tonight. But what I was going to say is you can either spend all your life marketing your shitty product or just build such a good product that it markets itself. And that's what I'm seeing really firsthand. When I had a shittier business model, 65% of my work was just trying to get clients, just trying to get more work, get more work, get more work. <laughs> now it's it's just doing the work <laughs> uh, because every it's so easy to get clients because the results show. Uh, it, it's really just it, as simple as that. And if you're if every single person that you work with for your business is not saying how great it is, then you're probably doing something wrong. Or it's just not good enough. And then that's a skill issue. It, that's mostly what it comes down to. If you were the best in the world at what you did, then it would be impossible to not find enough work. So that's just how the hell do you become the best in the world? And I'm definitely not that. I, I completely acknowledge it. But I'm in a niche where the competition is very, <laughs> very bad uh, because they're hiring 50-year-olds to do what's really a, a young person's job or it, most old people don't understand what I'm doing, which is great, which <laughs> it, it's great. Uh, it's, it's really just taking a lot of the old psychology and incorporating it today. But anyway, I mean, I'm, I am tired and I went on a rampage. I don't even know what I talked about because now all I can think about is I'm being a freaking pussy and I should be taking on more work, but I got to figure out the people problem, which is how you are going to scale. I guess that's what I'm going to think about for the rest of the night as I desperately want to fall asleep at, you know, not even eight o'clock at night. Anyway, goodbye.